You have heard of the main attractions in Rio like Christ Redeemer, the Ipanema and Copacabana beaches and the Sugarloaf. However, on this video I want to tell you about five of the hidden gems attractions in Rio, places that are up and coming and most of the international tourists still didn't find out about them. So let's start with number five, Royal Portuguese Reading Room. This is a small library in the heart of downtown Rio, and it counts with 350,000 volumes of Portuguese literature. You can see very antique books, uh, specimens such as the one of the first editions of Os Lusíadas, which is one of the most famous works of Portuguese literature. You can see some of these rare books uh, exhibited in the room itself, as well as the very intricate details of the entire architecture inside. It's a very beautiful place for you to take pictures, enjoy some books, because you are allowed to read some of their main collection, or just admire the rare books in display over there. The Royal Portuguese Reading Room can be visited every day from Monday to Friday, between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., and it's free to go in. It is very close to where you can take the tram uh, up to Santa Teresa, so it might be a good idea to pair it with your visit to Santa Teresa or to the visit with the other attractions around downtown area. Number 4. Paqueta Island Paqueta is a neighborhood of Rio that is situated at the back of Guanabara Bay and it is still largely unknown by tourists. Paqueta seems to be frozen in time, with its little colorful houses dating back from the beginning of the 20th century. It is supposed to be enjoyed as a day trip out of Rio, and for that you need to take the ferry from the downtown area. The trip usually takes around 70 minutes, and there are very few schedules every day, so it is really a day trip. In Paqueta, you can rent a bike, you can hire one of the people with the little group bikes to take you around, or you can simply just walk the entire neighborhood. It's a small island and you can do it all by yourself. There are not many steep areas. In fact, most of the island is flat, so you can see it at your own pace. Paqueta has many beautiful views from the Guanabara Bay that you wouldn't otherwise have from Rio, as well as uh, some beaches that nowadays might start to be good for bathing again, due to the efforts of cleaning the Guanabara Bay. However, I'm still not sure about that, so please be cautious if you intend on going to the beach while in the island. Paqueta has many small bed and breakfasts, restaurants, and just places for you to visit, see the tranquility of the area, and just overall enjoy a chill day away from the hustle and bustle that is real. The only way of getting there is getting the ferry, and there are ferries more or less every two hours or so, and on the way back in a similar time. Usually the same ferry that goes there comes back and the opposite is true. It costs 7 hei 70 cents to take the ferry each way, so you're looking at roughly 15 hei uh, return trip around just under $3. Even though many tourists still don't really visit Paqueta, it is very well known by locals as a day trip, so on weekends uh, usually it is a little bit busier than normal. So if you do want to enjoy the real tranquility and real peace of just having the island almost for yourself and the few locals that live there, I suggest you go during a weekday. Number 3. Sitio Bule Marx Situated in the western region of Rio, this property embodies a successful project developed over more than 40 years by the landscape architect and artist Roberto Bulemax. In his own words, this project was a landscape laboratory to create living works of art using native plants and drawing on modernist ideas. The site is characterized by sinuous forms, exuberant mass planting, architectural plant arrangements, dramatic color contrasts, use of tropical plants, and the incorporation of elements of traditional folk culture. In the site, over 3,500 cultivated species of tropical and subtropical flora grow in harmony with the native vegetation of the region, notably the Atlantic forest, biome, and associated ecosystems like the mangrove swamp and the Hestinga, which is a coastal tropical sandy plain. This situ, or this site, is the first modern tropical garden to be ever inscribed on the World Heritage List, and it has been done only in 2021, so it's a brand new World Heritage site that you can visit in Rio. For you to get there, it is a bit out of the way of the most attractions, so you definitely either need a transfer so someone to go and take you and pick you up back then, or you're gonna spend a, a lot of money getting a taxi there or Uber there, but then on your way back uh, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, or you can hire an entire guided tour 
um, that should take you there and then bring you back. If you decide to go by yourself, be aware of some things. They work from Tuesday to Saturday from 9.30 to 1.30, so just in the morning. And it, you can only take their own guided tours, so you, you cannot just go and visit by yourself. You need to be guided by one of their um, local guides. The entrance costs 10 reais and you need to pay it in cash, so make sure you have money with you when you go there, actual cash. And you do need to schedule your visit ahead of going, so you can't just decide and show up. You do need to schedule it, then get there and pay it in cash, and you will take a, a guided tour. The visit takes around 1 hour 30, and it's actually perfect for you to either go afterwards to the Grumari beach or one of those wild beaches I actually mentioned on my last video, or to go to the Pedra do Telegrafo, which is that place where people take the funny pictures where they look like they're hanging from, from a stone or from like one of the rocks at the top of the hill, if you know what I mean. Coming back now to downtown Rio, my favorite place for nightlife is number two in our list, Largo da Prainha or Pedra do Sal. Largo da Prainha is a place in Rio downtown that has been renovated in recent years and it became a hotspot for people wanting to enjoy nightlife. It is full of antique and old uh, buildings that became restaurants and bars and they have live music and people all over as well as the restaurants that you can just sit if you don't really want to go around and just walk around. You can sit there have a meal while enjoying the music and enjoying the atmosphere. I personally think Largo da Prainha is way better than Lapa, but I guess you would need to go to both of them and tell me which one you prefer. I find Largo da Prainha very charming. You have loads of options of bars, restaurants, you have good music going on, a very lively atmosphere, people drinking and, and enjoying themselves and, and listening to samba, and it's, it's just a great atmosphere. And it's yet yeah, not very well known by tourists. So it is full of locals. I hardly see any tourists when I go there. There are a few, but not that many. And it's just a, an amazing place for you to visit. I've been going there even before it got renovated, when it was like really underground. And now it's just like, there is a, a plus. It's something else for you to go there, see the beautiful architecture. The, the little statue in the middle, which is a, one of our famous Samba originators, I would say, which was a black woman from, unfortunately, slavery times. And it's just very beautiful, very nice to enjoy your time there. You don't need to spend anything if you don't want to. You can just go there and enjoy the music. Or if you want to sit down in one of the restaurants, you're going to pay for your meal, which I would assume is probably going to cost you maybe less than $50 for a couple. Or you can just buy your caipirinha or your drinks in one of the street vendors, like I did myself, uh, and that cost me 10 reais, so around $2. The best days for you to go to Lago da Prainha is pretty much every day after work hours, so like around 6 p.m. starts to get lively, or over the weekends, Friday and Saturday, and it gets very lively even later on. Monday is also very special because it's when you have the famous samba in Pedra do Sal, which is an alleyway just right next to it. Please be very mindful of where you're going because it's, it's very crowded and, and very busy uh, around Lago da Prainha and Pedra do Sal, but one or two streets down and there will be no one. So I would suggest you avoid going down those deserted areas. And for that reason, I would suggest you get there via taxi or Uber as well. But you can get the VLT, especially over weekdays, which is a bit more busy with people uh, coming out of work. So you can get the VLT and stop at the Museum of Tomorrow and just have like a, a short walk there if you feel safe to do so and if it is like still early around I don't know 6 p.m. or something like that you can get the the tramway that gets there and walk if you are in a pinch but on your way back I would still suggest you get an Uber or a taxi because it will get dark and it will get a little bit more deserted especially if you're there on a weekday. Getting on to the first spot on our list today Katechi Palace Katechi Palace is honestly a very special place because from the outside it doesn't really look like much. You see it's just like an, an old colonial building that really doesn't seem to be what it is. But once you get in it's amazing. I'll start with the garden. So the gardens are free to go in and there is like this entire area which nowadays is a park for the local community that you can go, you can enjoy, just sit down and, and read a book or, or basking under the sun, see the little ducks that live in the pond over there, or even take pictures with the very high palm trees. So if you, by any chance, you visit over there, but you haven't gone to the botanical garden or it's too busy, you have a very similar stretch of palm trees that you can take pictures with. 
They also have a small cafe as well as an independent cinema room in there. And I also think they have a folk museum right next to it. So it's, it's kind of a cultural center all over it. And it's free to go in except of course the cinema and whatever you get on the small bar they have. Now for the real gem, which is inside the Katete Palace. It costs you six reais to go in, so around one dollar. And it is very, very beautiful inside. So the architecture, all the decor, it, the, the house uh, was owned or was actually built by a very rich farmer from the 1900s. And he made a point and kind of show all of his wealth through the decoration in his house. So each room has a very different decor and it's extremely beautiful, extremely delicate, all the details. And then after a while, like in the, that was the 1800s. And then once it, we got to the 1900s, that became the actual government, Brazilian government headquarters in there. So you're also gonna see something like the ministerial room and, and a beautiful view of the garden. And then on the, on the upper floors is where that was the headquarters of the, the actual living quarters. So you will see a little bit of Brazilian history if you're interested in that. But what I think it's really, really understated is how beautiful it is inside of the entire palace. I do suggest you take your time to visit if you can. It is very easy to pair the Catechi Palace with the Christ Redeemer because they are relatively close to each other. So you can get an Uber and it's going to take you five to 10 minutes depending of the traffic. And it's, it's just very cheap and very, very beautiful to visit. So if you do have the time, if you're looking for something that is a little bit more out of the beaten path for you to visit, I definitely suggest you go to Catechi Palace and to all of the other places I've mentioned here. And if you like this video and want to know more about all of these attractions, I have detailed videos on all of them, which I will link here. And I have also linked them throughout the videos. I hope you to see you next time. Speak soon. Bye.